So, good morning students. Uh, today we will uh, discuss the last ensemble in this chapter which is the grand canonical ensemble and this is a very important ensemble in the fact uh, because it allows for uh, the correct enumeration of states uh, when you go and do the calculation in quantum statistical mechanics. So, the natural ensemble to do calculations in quantum systems is the grand canonical ensemble and so why not finish this chapter on classical statmec with the discussion of this grand canonical ensemble. So, the ensemble is basically a collection of systems or microstates all specified by the macro state mu some generalized variable x I have taken volume here and temperature t. Okay. So, you can maintain the temperature by allowing exchange of energy with the reservoir. You can maintain volume by keeping fixed walls. So, the system is mechanically isolated and uh, you can maintain uh, chemical potential in a system by allowing particle interactions with the reservoir. Okay. So, these interactions are non-zero which means the system is going to exchange both energy and number of particles to maintain constant mu and constant t. Okay. So, let us draw a schematic that will help us understand what is going on. So, I am going to draw my system here. So, this is going to be my system in contact with a reservoir and as usual the joint system and reservoir is in micro canonical ensemble which is always the case. Okay. The system is not isolated, the reservoir is not isolated, but system plus reservoir is isolated. So, the system is maintained at constant volume and uh, that is ok because I have taken fixed walls, their walls are not moving. So, volume can be maintained constant, but now the walls between system and the reservoir are porous. So, they allow for interaction of uh, you know chemical interaction or you allow for exchange of particles between system and reservoir in order to keep mu fixed. So, this fixes mu and you allow for interaction in energy to keep the temperature constant. So, wherever, whenever there is a fall in uh, you know whenever the system's temperature is below the offset below the set temperature the reservoir will give energy and uh, bring the system back to the temperature T and uh, whenever the system's temperature is above the reservoir it will act like a sink and withdraw energy to bring the system back to temperature T. So, after a long time of uh, contact with the reservoir, the system's temperature is set to T and the chemical potential is set to the chemical potential of the reservoir. So, now we have a system which at constant mu V and T. So, we would be interested in uh, looking at uh, the probability distribution function of the microstates. So, I have defined a macro state here, it is the specified value of mu, v and t. This is my macro state. A micro state here would uh, basically correspond to you know I am going to use the microstate with a different symbol here because uh, mu is already reserved to the chemical potential and uh, and I am going to write down the microstate as collection of uh, momentum coordinates position coordinates and momentum coordinates. we will restart it. No, no, it is simple I, I do not want this slide it will I mean this is it is going to throw so much glare on my screen. 
yeah. So, let us start it again, I mean I am sort of it broke the flow. Is this also off? Off, yes. Start yeah, we will start from the beginning. Some water also. So, good morning students, uh, <coughs> today we will uh, talk about uh, the last ensemble in our course, okay. This is already not going well. All right, so. Good morning students, uh, we will uh, start a discussion on the last ensemble in our course which is the grand canonical ensemble. So, this is the ensemble uh, where the member systems are all specified by a macro state at constant chemical potential, volume and temperature. So, you can Instead of volume, you can take any other generalized variable such as magnetization, um, for example, for spins in a constant magnetic field. Let me also tell you that this is the uh, most in important ensemble in statistical mechanics in the sense that it, it naturally provides for the correct enumeration of states for systems in quantum mechanics. So, you will realize in chapter 3 that the most natural ensemble to do calculations in quantum systems is the grand canonical ensemble. So, I am going to spend uh, the last part of my lecture precisely uh, on, on this issue on this uh, ensemble which is uh, the ensemble at constant chemical potential volume and temperature. So, the grand canonical ensemble is maintained by fixing temperature and I know I can fix temperature by allowing for energy interactions with the reservoir and uh, I can fix volume in any system by just having fixed walls. So, there is no work, mechanical work So, walls do not move and there is no mechanical work and I can fix the chemical potential by allowing exchange of particles with the reservoir. So, this is called as thermal uh, interaction with the reservoir and this is called as you know uh, exchange of particles with the reservoir. So, if you allow for energy interaction it keeps temperature constant, if you allow for uh, exchange of interactions uh, the exchange of particles with the reservoir you can keep the chemical potential constant and if you keep fixed walls do not allow them to move then that would uh, just fix your volume thereby saying that there is no mechanical work done on the system. So, I can draw a schematic here to show what is going on by drawing my system and connecting it with a reservoir. Uh, 
okay. So, you can say that the system is in constant volume because the walls are fixed okay. So, the walls are fixed and uh, you allow for interaction of energy. So, there is exchange of energy with the reservoir that keeps my temperature constant okay. and you also allow for particles to be exchanged because the walls can be made to be porous. So, that would uh, keep my chemical potential constant. Okay. So, now let us uh, look at a typical micro state that the system can rest in. So, a micro state here is basically specified by a label nu. I am going to use a label nu because mu is already reserved for chemical potential. So, a micro state here is nothing but the, the set of uh, position and momentum coordinates. It belonging to a certain instant when the number of particles is n nu because the number of particles are also changing. So, I here belongs to uh, you know uh, the one of the n nu particles in that particular nth microstate. Okay. So, our microstate is uh, not just uh, q i and p i for a fixed n, n itself is varying from microstate to microstate. Okay. So, that is the definition of a microstate here. Which, being, which tells me that the probability of finding my system in a microstate nu such that the number of particles are n nu okay, is nothing but uh, the, the Boltzmann factor e to the power minus beta into the energy scale which in this problem is the Hamiltonian for the nth microstate where you have n nu particles minus an energy scale which is due to the constant chemical potential which is uh, mu times n nu because that is the uh, energy scale for the problem. Okay. So, the energy scale for the problem is not the Hamiltonian alone it is h nu the Hamiltonian for the nth microstate minus the chemical work that you are allowing to be done on the system and n here is the number of particle in the nth microstate. Okay. Well, naturally this uh, PDF is not normalized, you have to normalize it and so the factor the norm is uh, the uh, grand canonical partition function and I am going to give it a, a different label with the double horizontal strikes. So, this is the partition function of the system in the grand canonical uh, ensemble. Okay. So, let us call this as uh, equation 1. Now, you can uh, easily see what should be the expression for the partition function. So, the grand canonical partition function that provides the link with thermodynamics can be very easily obtained. as simply summation over all microstates of this Boltzmann factor. Okay. So, let us do that. So, we will take uh, summation over all the microstates. Now, microstates is the doublet of uh, nu n nu. Okay. That is a combination which specifies a single mi microstate and I am going to sum over uh, the Boltzmann factor which is e raise to minus beta the energy scale. Okay. Now, this is a double summation, so it is in some sense unrestricted sum
So, all possible values of n and nu are taken, but I can convert this into a restricted sum and do this calculation easily. So, what I am going to say is that let me first uh, compute the sum over all possible number of particles. Okay. So, that would be saying that I am going to take uh, the summation over n nu. Okay. So, here uh, the n nu will go from uh, 0 to infinity all possible number of particles. The extreme values of n nu would have a probability which is very, very small as can be seen. Okay. So, once you have fixed your uh, n nu, you can compute the inner sum over all micro state such that it takes the value n nu from the previous sum. Okay. And for each n nu that is set in the outer sum, you compute all possible uh, micro states. And so, I have to take uh, e to the power uh, beta outside because that does not depend on the micro state nu. Okay. So, this will be acting only over e to the power beta mu n nu because this is just a, the variable here is just the number of particles in the micro state and the inner sum would now be on the micro states such that the number of particles is fixed to n nu by the outer sum summation over e raise to minus beta h nu. Is that okay? So, now it is like uh, changing from unrestricted sum to restricted sum. So, this thing is a restricted sum. Okay. So, you for example, you in the outer sum n nu could be 50. So, you have 50 particles in your system. For these 50 particles, compute all possible micro states by arranging the particles in the box and that is your inner sum. Then you change 50 to 51 and then compute all possible micro states for these 51 particles and compute the inner sum. So, this way you take the number of particles in the outer sum from 0 to infinity and compute the inner sum. Okay. Now, if you pay attention to this inner sum, it is looking very familiar. Okay, so, it already looks familiar in the sense that this is nothing but the summation over the Boltzmann factor for n nu particles. Okay. So, I am going to call it as the canonical partition function with n nu particles. If you recall, this is the canonical partition function for n nu particles, because the only thing that is, uh, so the, the, the inner sum is at constant temperature at constant volume okay. and now it is at a constant n nu. So, this is a partition function for n v t or the canonical partition function. n is not varying for the inner sum, it is constant. So, it is a partition function for the canonical ensemble. So, that restricted sum is nothing but the canonical partition function. But now, we can also, uh, so I am going to write this as uh, So, my grand canonical partition function is, is this expression summation over all n e raise to beta mu n times the canonical partition function. Okay. So, I am going to call this as equation uh, 1. Okay. And now, you can compute averages of various quantities in our, in our system. So, you can uh, compute for example, um, average number of particles in the system, because n is a fluctuating quantity to keep chemical potential constant. Like I said, for every fluctuating random variable, 
we are interested in its moments. The first moment to compute is its average. So, to compute average number of particles, which is like uh, saying what is the uh, expectation value of n. Okay. Now, this is simple, this is nothing but uh, summation over all nu. Okay. N nu e to the power uh, the probability distribution function, which is uh, nothing but uh, fine, which is like saying my PDF here is going to tell me what is the probability of finding a microstate with n nu particles and having momenta in position, which is given by nu. So, you simply sample your n u in that uh, uh, PDF and the result would nothing be would be nothing but your uh, average number of particles. So, when you do this sampling what do you get? You have the you have to do this sampling and uh, this would be nothing but n u and your uh, PDF is nothing but e to the power minus beta. Uh, h nu minus mu n nu over the grand canonical partition function fine. Now, you can pull out uh, n nu by simply taking a derivative with respect to beta mu. Okay. So, you can write down that I will take a derivative with respect to beta mu of the grand canonical partition function okay, and the denominator already has a grand canonical partition function. Okay. So, this is nothing but uh, you can write it as uh, 1 upon beta d by d mu of ln z, where z is nothing but uh, the grand canonical partition function. So, it is have a function of uh, mu v and t. Okay. So, this is the expression for uh, average number of particles in your system. Okay. So, look at your uh, partition function, which is uh, nothing but the sum over all degrees of freedom and uh, the degrees of freedom here are not just the uh, position momenta but they are also the number of particles in a given microstate. So, this is the uh, uh, number of particles in the system also called as the mean n. You can also compute fluctuations of uh, n. So, these are nothing but uh, the second cumulant of uh, the random variable n and that is nothing but uh, you take uh, the second moment minus the square of the first moment and then it is uh, very simple to see that uh, it is nothing but uh, you can you can already see that this is uh, d over d beta mu you have to pull out n two times. So, it is a second derivative of this. Uh, your canonical uh, grand canonical partition function over the grand canonical partition function minus uh, square of the first derivative ok. So, if you see this will uh, the terms in, in, the, in the bracketed term is nothing but uh, mean n and the first term is nothing but the mean of n square okay. and you can write this as uh, nothing but uh, d over uh, d beta mu of uh, uh, you can write it as uh, 1 upon z 
dz over d beta mu is it okay so by chain rule it will expand to the previous equality and if you pay attention to the fact uh, the term in the parenthesis is nothing but uh, logarithm of uh, the derivative of the logarithm of z so this is nothing but d over d beta mu of uh, i can write this as uh, fine okay so but now the this term has already been computed okay so this term has already been computed so this is over here so this is nothing but uh, your uh, n itself okay so this is d over d beta mu of n okay so now you can see that uh, this thing scales as n because beta mu is in intensive quantity n scales as n okay so your variance scales as n okay so our variance scales as n this is my variance okay or the second cumulant that tells me that the standard deviation which is a uh, square root of my variance will scale as a uh, square root n this is the standard deviation now we can see that the ratio of uh, standard deviation over mean which is basically a uh, a quantification of ensemble equivalence diminishes in the limit of uh, large n so the ratio of uh, width over mean which will always signify how sharp your distribution is in the thermodynamic limit so this will be square root n over n which is nothing but uh, 1 upon square root n and that will diminish or go to zero in the thermodynamic limit so this is called as the ensemble equivalence that means our grand canonical system in the limit of n going to infinity suppose this is a large you know room or a hall or an auditorium which is in grand canonical ensemble would have its number of particles fixed so it would actually be a a system looking very similar to a canonical ensemble its number of particles are fixed no longer fluctuating well you can argue that the there is a fluctuation and the the as you increase the system size the the width also increases okay of the distribution but i'm going to ask what is the proportion of your uh, width to mean and that proportion would be um, uh, a diminishing value in the thermodynamic limit so essentially it has features of a can micro canonical ensemble as n goes to infinity okay so it is a uh, equivalent not equal to it's equivalent to that is why we are saying it's equivalent to micro canonical ensemble the ensemble where n is fixed in your ensemble the n is not fixed but it's uh, the relative uh, width over mean is a diminishing value so essentially its features are like that of a micro canonical ensemble as n goes to infinity now we can uh, develop connections uh, with uh, thermodynamics as usual in all ensembles we can develop connections with thermodynamics and uh, this connections are these connections are always established through the partition function so i'm going to uh, bring down my partition function which is a very important uh, um, derivation so let us uh, export 
our uh, canonical grand canonical partition function downstairs and uh, build a connection with thermodynamics ok. So, let us export it here fantastic. So, we now have a uh, our uh, And just to remind you that this is the canonical uh, partition function. Okay. Now. I need an approximation of uh, this partition function because uh, again computing this summation over infinity is difficult. So, can I approximate it? Now, you can approximate using uh, a technique called as saddle point approximation since n is very large. So, this is an approximation technique that is discussed in our uh, appendix. So, you can uh, refer to it. Since uh, n is very large, we can take a large number of particles in the system okay. uh, and uh, the distribution is sharp. By sharp distribution, I mean I have already shown that the uh, the the ratio of uh, width over mean has gone to uh, zero as n goes to infinity. This is the meaning of a sharp distribution. Okay. I can approximate. Uh, the summation in the above expression we can approximate this uh, grand canonical partition function by largest summand. So, grand canonical partition function is already a sum over so many terms. Okay. If you look at the right hand side of the grand canonical partition function, it is a sum over so many terms. Okay. The idea here is to not uh, take the entire sum, the idea here is to use the saddle point approximation. Okay. So, this is called as the saddle point approximation. So, the sum will now be replaced by the maximum of the summand. Okay. This technique has been discussed in detail in the appendix. So, you can now write down the partition function the grand canonical partition function. approximated by the maximum summand. Okay. Now, it is not an exact equality, it is an approximation. So, the maximum summand here, the first term would be e to the power beta mu n star Here n star is the uh, the value that maximizes uh, the exponential and I have to also take, see it is a product of two values. So, I have to take maxima of both of them. So, I am going to take uh, the maxima of uh, z itself the, the canonical partition function also. Okay. So, I will say that the n star here maximizes
the grand canonical partition function. Okay. So, it has to maximize both the exponent e raise to beta mu n and the canonical partition function z. Hmm? And uh, this is nothing but uh, if you look at uh, our derivations, the canonical partition function if you recall was already approximated the maxima of this was e to the power minus beta into free energy if you recall okay, where uh, f is uh, free energy of a uh, system. Okay. So, here E star is the free energy that minimizes uh, the E star is the energy that minimizes free energy and hence we take that uh, free energy here okay. and uh, so then you can write it as uh, basically you drop all the stars because now they are all the thermodynamic variables. So, we have dropped all the subscript and you can write it as E to the power minus beta into the free energy minus mu n. So, now all the quantities are uh, stress wise. So, we have dropped the asterisk symbol for convenience okay? because these quantities are thermodynamic in nature. So, n star here is a thermodynamic n that maximizes it, E star is also thermodynamic. So, I am going to drop uh, the symbols for convenience. Okay, because otherwise I will have a star on each symbol inside. So, dropping the symbol star with the understanding that all energies and all number of particles are already in the thermodynamic limit. So, the n here in the final expression is the thermodynamic n, E star is the thermodynamic E, F is the thermodynamic F, free energy and so on. So, I can write down this uh, final uh, equality as e to the power minus beta the uh, thermodynamic uh, free energy or the Helmholtz free energy. Uh, I am going to write it as uh, Helmholtz free energy is nothing but uh, the sum of uh, internal energy minus uh, temperature entropy work minus mu n. So, E minus T s is F. Okay. So, now we what we have is basically uh, all these are approximations. So, now if you look at this is my grand canonical partition function and it is basically e to the power minus beta into some energy scale E minus T s minus mu 1. So, we can uh, label this as some equation number, let us uh, label it as equation number 2. So, if we define it, it is in our hands to define this energy scale. So, I am going to define it, uh, this energy scale okay, just for convenience sake as uh, some grand potential. Okay. So, this is the energy scale that will build connections with thermodynamics. Okay. So, I am going to define my energy scale in this uh, uh, Boltzmann factor as grand potential. So, I can write down my grand canonical potential as a uh, e to the power minus beta psi. Okay. And now, you can see that the connections from thermodynamics can be established by simply taking a logarithm. So, my thermodynamic energy scale is psi. So, this will be nothing but minus 1 upon beta ln the grand canonical potential. Compare this with the connection that you established in the context of the Gibbs canonical ensemble. So, there the relevant uh, energy potential was the 
Gibbs free energy. In the canonical ensemble, the re relevant energy scale was the Helmholtz free energy. And here you have the grand potential that sets up that connection from the statistical mechanics to thermodynamics. So, this is the uh, um, very important result. So, if you know how to uh, compute the partition function for a system, then you can use this relationship to compute various thermodynamic quantities. What do I mean by that? Well, I mean that if you know partition function, then you can invoke appropriate derivatives of the partition function and compute the uh, thermodynamic quantities. For instance, our energy scale here is for uh, thermodynamic quantities. I am going to stop after this and take the example of an ideal gas in the next lecture. But just to uh, sort of uh, end the discussion, uh, um, I want to explain what I just said, okay, how do I invoke appropriate derivatives. So, look at this energy scale that is in front of you, the grand potential. So, this is E minus T s minus mu n. Okay. So, you start with that okay, and take the incremental uh, derivatives okay, or the der differentials on uh, the, uh, the thermodynamic law. So, what you have is uh, the following expression. Okay, fine. Now, you can use the first law of thermodynamics and do something with uh, d e minus d s t d s minus mu d n. So, I can uh, write this as uh, I can substitute for d e minus t d s minus mu t n as uh, simply minus p d v. because the first law allows me to write down the heat energy as uh, that flows into the system as the rise in internal energy plus the pressure volume work done by the system minus the chemical work. Okay, so, minus P d V will simply be what I have substituted for. So, then if, uh, if, I, if I look at this uh, if I look at this expression in front of me, I can compute uh, pressure, entropy and number of particles by invoking the appropriate derivatives of the grand potential. Okay. So, I can write down pressure as a negative derivative of the grand potential with respect to volume. Okay. So, let me write this again. I can write it as a negative uh, derivative of the grand potential at constant chemical potential and temperature and I can uh, compute entropy. as a minus derivative of the grand potential at constant temperature at with respect to temperature at constant uh, volume and chemical potential. And finally, I can compute uh, number of particles by taking derivative with respect to chemical potential. fine. So, you can compute. So, your look at look into this your system is at constant mu v and t and uh, derivative with respect to these uh, thermodynamic variables of the grand potential 
provides the connection with uh, thermodynamics. So, I can compute the pressure of my system, entropy of my system, and number of particles of my system using these uh, uh, appropriate derivatives. So, you can substitute for xi in these derivatives from this expression and compute all these quantities. So, you, if you have the knowledge of xi, you can compute uh, all these derivatives and invoke uh, uh, and, in, and compute the thermodynamic quantity. So, in the next class, we will take the example, I will take a working example in the class and uh, take the ideal gas as one uh, system and do this calculation and compute uh, pressure, entropy and number of particles at equilibrium. So, we break here and when we meet in the next class, I am going to discuss uh, the ideal gas under a grand canonical ensemble and we will compute various thermodynamic quantities that we have just discussed in this lecture. Thank you.